Hey guys, this is Einar. Uh, welcome to your third theoretical tutorial in Basic Statistics 1 at the Department of Sociology at the Stockholm University. Today we're going to talk about a correlation coefficient, which is called Pearson's Rxy. Why are we creating a special uh, theoretical tutorial for this measure? Well, it's a very important correlation coefficient. It's actually the most usual, useful cor correlation coefficients we're going to talk about in this course. Uh, and it is used widely in the social sciences. Why is that? Well, it is because it not only tells us the strength of a correlation, it tells us the direction of the correlation, if it is positive or negative. Um, it is also useful because it can be used at, at ratio, uh, interval, and even ordinal scale uh, in practice. Uh, so we're going to get right into it and start talking about this measure, I think, now. To begin with, we're going to conceptualize um, an investigation, our theory, what we want to do. Uh, we have uh, an x variable here, and we're saying the x variable has an effect on the y variable. But we're not sure uh, exactly what that effect is. This might, for example, be income, and this might be health, or this might be education, and this might be income. You know, it, we're trying to find a connection between two variables, and this, of course, is dependent on what kind of theory we're, we're talking about. There's loads of stuff in sociology that we're trying to prove and say about society, and we do this with the help of these measures. So what we've done here is we've, we've created a scale for x, we've created a scale for y. They don't do not have to be the same scale. And then we've been ob uh, observing different observations. Now these observations can be events or they can be people or whatever. Let's say they're people for now and that they have the value 2 for x and this one has the value 2.3 or something for y. So each observation has a value for x and a value for y. Now if you just take a quick look at this, I would say we're having a positive correlation here because it seems like when x goes up in value, as in this observation, y also increases in value when you compare to this one where x is low value and y also is a low value. This is a characteristic, characteristic of positive correlations, positive relationships. When x increases, y will also increase. So we need to find somehow of, some way of, of, of conceptualizing this mathematically. Well, we'll start by talking about what we're actually um, describing here. We're talking about variation. We're saying that uh, people will have different values for x. The values they have will vary. And they will have different values for y. The value that the, they have different, they will vary in the, in the y variable as well. So there's variation here. And what we're talking about really is there's a co-variation. They vary together. So when x is, are, are at high varieties, y will also be at high varieties. And vice versa when it comes to low varieties. So we need to find a measure of, of variance. And in in the previous tutorials, we've used ranks, we've used frequency tables, but now we're going to use um, the distance from the mean. Now, check out the tutorial about the standard deviation if you haven't done that, because that is uh, is what this is based upon. We're talking about the distances these each observation have to the mean of x and the mean of y. And this distance is going to help us um, describe this positive relationship that we think we're seeing here. But to, give, to begin with, we're going to talk about a little bit about how we're defining our data here. We're dividing our area here, our, our scatter plot, as we call it, into four different parts. And we call these quadrants. So this is the first quadrant, this is the second quadrant, this is the third quadrant, and this is the fourth quadrant. Just so you know when I'm talking about it. And when you look at the distances each observation has to the different means, we will get positive and negative values. For example, this observation is below the, the, the mean when it comes to its y, y values. It has a y value of 2.3 or something, and the mean is located at 4.3 or something. So it will have a negative value. Um, it's below average. And it is also below average when it comes to x, because it seems to have an x value of 2, while the x mean is actually higher than that. So this one is below the, both the averages, or the means, I should say. Meanwhile, this observation is above mean for both its uh, x and y values. And this one is, um, is above average when it comes to the y value and below average when it comes to the x value. Okay, so this is, uh, this is our first way of conceptualizing these distances. We're, and, and they will be measured in the respective ca category scales. So, for example, this distance here, that this observation has to x will be measured in, well, if x is income, it will be measured in dollars or kroners or something. And if this was age, for example, this distance will be measured in years. What we're going to do is we're going to multiply these distances because we want to add them all up, add all this distance up, and find the characteristics of this distance in order to describe the variation because this is actually a measure of variation. So we need to add up all of our variation 
And if we multiply this negative um, variation or distance to x by a positive variation this observation has, we're going to get a negative value. And vice versa, if we have a negative value multiplied by negative value, i.e. a negative distance multiplied by negative distance, we'll get a positive uh, distance. And two positives up here will make a positive, and a positive and negative down here will make a negative. So this will actually mean that our quadrants will produce different, um, value, uh, different um, uh, directions for the distances. For example, the distances in this quadrant will be negative values, while the distances in this quadrant will be positive values. So each observation here has an I which identifies it, where, where um, um, this might be I1, I2, I3, I4. So it's a way of, of indexing our observations. And for each observation, we're subtracting the mean. Okay? So this is the mean for X, and this is the mean for Y. And we're doing this for each observation. So this is the distance for uh, the same observation. So if you look at this observation, for example, we take its distance to uh, x bar, i.e. the average for x, which will become a positive value because we're located in this quadrant. We will take its distance to y, which uh, is going to be a positive value as well because um, we're multiplying both these together with each other here. We're multiplying these two. Even though they're ne negative numbers, they're going to be positive when we multiply them. Uh, and thus we get uh, a summed up distance for this observation. We're going to do this for all our observations. So what we're doing is we're adding up all of our distances, in this case it's going to be a negative distance, uh, in this case it's going to be a positive distance, positive distance, and negative distance. And you'll see that if most of our variation is located in the positive quadrants, we'll get a positive number. And if most of our variation is located in the negative quadrants, we'll get a negative number. So this is a, is a measure of which direction um, our, our, uh, our, vari our change is going, our variation is going. Because if this was opposite and we, we had our observations located here um, at low values for x and high values for y, and, and vice versa, when the values are high for x and below at y, we have a negative correlation and therefore the distances in the negative quadrants will be higher. So the result of this sum will tell us something about the direction of our correlation. So if we do that, we sum up all of the directions. Uh, all of our distances uh, in our correlation and divided by n, we get sort of an average distance uh, described in a positive or negative term, term from our means. So we're getting a an, an idea of the covariance between our variables, i.e. the var how they vary together. Now you have to be careful here because it's not an average. Since we're multiplying them together, this is going to be a little bit slightly weird number. You can't describe it in terms of years as this scale is, or in terms of income as this year uh, axis might be. And that is also our next issue here. Uh, because these scales might vary uh, kind of widely, um, you, this, this measure will give us very different results depending on what scales we have. If, for, for example, this was described in thousands, so you had 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000, 60,000, this would become a very large number as the distances to the x bar here would become very large. Um, and that, so this, uh, the distances here, if they were described in decades, for example, years, like 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, etc., um, it, it would change the result when we multiply our distances together. Now this is a problem because we want to want to be able to compare correlations between different variables. We want want might this want might to say, uh, what is the correlation like between income and health? Oh, okay, that was interesting. What is the correlation be like between income and happiness, which might be at a totally different scale? Well, then you would get a totally different number, and you wouldn't be able to compare it without really like taking the axes into account. So we we have to find a way of standardizing uh, our distances so we're, we're measuring everything at the same scale. Now one way of doing this is by dividing um, our scales by something that varies in accordance with that scale and one of these things is variance. As we know uh, standard deviation is a measure of this variance. If you don't know what standard deviation is you have to watch that tutorial otherwise you will not understand this measure. Um, for example if we have income here and it's expressed in tens of thousands the variance or the standard deviation which we're using here will also be de described in terms of tens of thousands. So if we, even if this part of the equation increases a lot because suddenly the values here become really large, it'll be compensated by the fact that this value will also become very large. And vice versa, if this value for example is very small, 
um, it will be compensated for by the fact that this value will also become very small. So what we're doing here is we're going to be able to transform these and put them on the same scale. And then we divide them. Um, and, and in that way, we actually get a standardized measure called Pearson's RXY that can be compared between different variables at different scales, which is amazing because that means we can start comparing um, different uh, investigations we're doing. We can start uh, to comparing my data to your data and we can build new theories uh, based on this simple measure on how, what the correlation looks like in our, in our, in our world, <laughs> so to speak. So that's the idea. Yeah. The variance is dependent on the scale, so if we divide the variance by the values, we'll get a standardized measure. And don't be afraid by this equation, it's just showing how we're simplifying it. When we're saying that we're dividing each of our observations distance to the mean by its standard deviation, we call that z. Okay, so this whole part of the equation is actually called z for x, and this whole part of the equation is called z for y. And this, when you, when you say something is called z for something, it's a standardized measure. And what we're saying is we divided it by the standard deviation. And this is actually equal to the rxy. So this is the formula for rxy. So you could say that we've changed the scales here. The relationships are still the same. You see, they're still the same distances from each other. They're still the same distances, relative distances, of course, from the different means. But we've changed the scales, so we now have the same scales, and we are able to compare our rxy to other um, investigations. We, I, I hope to see you in the tutorial about rxy, because this is also something uh, you'll learn by doing it. Believe me, you'll get a better understanding of this measure if you just put in some values and experiment with, um, with the file that we're going to be working with. So I hope to see you in the tutorial about Pearson's RXY. Uh, this is it for me on, on this theoretical uh, lecture. Uh, I hope it was useful for you and I wish you good luck and I have some fun with this and try try imagining what the distances will be for negative relations and, and zero relations relationships or correlations I should say. So have a really nice day. I'll see you later and good luck. Bye bye.